Yeah, it's your boy P. Thank you for tuning in to No Flag Radio. I'm your host. Kicking it live in this bitch for y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Today we're talking about what the coons won't say about that 11-year-old black girl punched by that white supremacist in their mall out of North Carolina. So let me just start off by saying, Drake. Drake, the needle one hot is giving the world, but the world won't have some kids. <laughs> We're rolling on that shit for some hours, man. That shit is fucking hilarious, man. Big soldier on y'all ass. Boy, he ain't even playing with his bullshit he be talking about. But look, I just want to get on with that first. Let's start with that first, all right? But. We're talking about what coons ain't going to say about that 11-year-old black girl that got punched in that mall by white supremacists. We've been hearing from the coons all week, and I'm sick and tired of this shit. So, we know out in Asheville, North Carolina, in a mall, a white supremacist fat tub of lard named David Bell is going to be in court on the 5th of February this month, this coming month, for his assault on three black girls in a mall. And, you know me, I like to... You know, with these ambulance chasing their stories, I like to wait and hear what black people are going to say. Take the pulse of my people first. You know what I mean? To see who on cold, to see who heart beating and who not out in this bitch. All right? Plus me, just waiting helps me deal with my impulsive behavior. You know what I'm saying? It helps me kind of lay out my thoughts and see how shit unfold, right? And the coons came out at night in this bitch. For real, they did. And, you know, I ain't surprised to see them come out on some bullshit. I'm not disappointed. I already know what they finna do. But as far as this issue, David Bell, his lawyer, Andy Banshoff, is already talking about PTSD and him already being under long-term treatment for a traumatic brain injury, already running to this white supremacist failsafe of enfeeblement of the high IQ brain. Right. And that just keeps happening. Whether the high IQ brain is shooting up a preschool, that enfeeblement just keeps happening with a high IQ asses. Right. Um, whether the high IQ brain is fucking shooting up a church, it keeps happening. Whether they got to have a, a pedophile ring that they running in Hollywood or in Congress or in the music industry, they always seem to have some sort of brain fuck up. Y'all notice that? And Nobody else in society who's doing crime, especially not black people, anybody black, is ever allowed to use that damn excuse of a brain fuck up. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous motherfuckers is who they is. Huh? And yeah, maybe like in the courtroom, you know, you'll get some people, black people talk about, oh, I plead insanity or some shit like that. But we don't get that license to use that shit in the daily print media of the United States before a fucking trial. You know what I mean? It's like, nigger, you better face the music on day one, nigger. You knew what you were doing, nigger, and you're going to pay, nigger. That's all it is with us. It's never no, my mind was hurting, my brain was hurting, right? But he claims to have all these mental diseases. Now, uh, the report I read about him having a mental disease came out on the 15th, that was about four days ago. This happened last weekend at the mall, so I, you know, a couple days later, you talking about mental diseases, okay, but he's going to have to prove a history of this, we know, in the court, since he's talking that shit, and of course, he could just get a fake synopsis from a white supremacist doctor, and his lawyers co-signed the white supremacist doctor, that's one thing about being in a system of white supremacy, you have all hands on motherfucking deck to help whiteness get off, but nobody in his family was stopping him from fucking with these little girls in the mall, knowing how damaged that he was mentally. Damage, quote unquote, right? Like, okay, yeah, get the fuck out of here. You lying. You know what I mean, his brain injury was not that severe to where he couldn't pester these young girls with his family sitting there watching him have a mental episode and them not intervening, right? Coons is not going to say that shit, right? That's the first thing I want to say. All these coons coming out saying, well, they had surrounded his family. They was around his family. What was you doing? They surrounded your family. The, the family, the, well, you got to hit. Uh, you got to hit everybody. If your family is surrounded, motherfucker, the family, 
was out of harm's way the whole time. If you watch the fucking video. So all that, I, I hit a bitch if she run up on my family. I said, put the fisticuffs on no, any woman if she runs up on my family. Motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> all that shit they talking. Uh, the, the black female child is crazy. All that shit, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't get surrounded. Coons is not going to say that. He already pushed two of the other girls there before he got to the 11-year-old. And their stories are going to come out as well. He has to be on court on the 5th to explain himself. <clears throat> I'm saying he got to be there on the 5th to get it in and make up some lies. But that's why I say three girls. He was charged for all three of the girls that he fucked with. The one that he punched and the two that he pushed. So, yeah, you motherfuckers talking that shit. But he got a few charges. The girls didn't get no charges, as they should. And he's going to have to explain why his family just allowed his PTSD ass, his trauma-having ass, to just run wild on children in public. He's going to have to lay that flat. Just giving you some... Just giving some time, you off-coon... Off-cold cooning motherfuckers. <laughs> off-coon. Yeah, you should. You better get off-cooning. You, you off, all right, as a coon. All you mark ass niggas giggling and bitching like hoes over the shit. They got something to say about this child defending herself the best way she know how. You know what I'm saying you y'all y'all on the coon pill. But like I said, he already pushed two of the girls and he chose, keyword chose, to insert his motherfucking ho 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 fat ass into their issue in his white supremacist imagination and he's talking his shit like uh what do you say oh they were having an issue in his little imagination he imagined them having an issue but we don't know we ain't heard from no lawyers on the girl side yet if, if this is a mall motherfucker let the mall security handle it he's stepping his ass up ho 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 what's going on hey what's going on i think something's going on let me just start pushing people. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what he came into the scene on. He came into the scene on some whole, 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 I'm trying to get in your way. All right? Like I said, if it's a security issue, if it's a mall, let the mall security handle it. Why is this 51-year-old man inserting himself into their issue? Quote, unquote, issue. We don't even know what the fuck happened before the fucking camera turned on. All right? He's making it up for all I know, for all we know. So he started off overstepping his bounds from the beginning. Coon's going to act like he ain't do that. Uh, people talking that uh, she was at the mall at 11 by herself. Motherfucker. I was learning how to drive at 12. So what the fuck is a mall at 11? But okay, I get it. She a girl. You know, I get it. White supremacist society is running nuts on everybody after they got a president that allows them to feel tough. I mean, they got police killing black people that make them feel tough. Okay, okay. And she wasn't with a bunch of 11-year-olds like these cool niggas is running with. They running with that shit. Talking about she was with a bunch of 11-year-olds. Like, no, they were older kids. The other adolescent kids that he pushed, they were 13. He pushed some above 12-year-old kids in the mall. And 13 is mall going age in a lot of places. 13 is not no, a lot of 13-year-olds go to the mall. So, and uh, I also believe that they even had some older people that were under 18 that were there as well. But Coons don't want to hear that shit either. But okay, punk-ass niggas, right? Uh, what gets me the most is you got dumb people talking about her parenting. Black people talking about her parenting, right? Which is off cold than a bitch. And I brought this up in Corey Holcomb chat. I brought this up in the Zoe Williams chat. I brought this up in the Tariq Nasheed chat. And people was like, yeah, bro, Corey tripping. And niggas like that be tripping, right? And this ain't a slight to Corey and like that. Niggas, niggas already gave it to him pretty much. <laughs> um, this is just me letting him or anybody who fuck with him know the code around this type of thing. If you are even up for knowing that shit, right? You can't, you know, you can't force nobody to know no shit. But the point is, when these situations happen, or altercation or some shit like that, with somebody white, assaulting somebody black, 
you can't jump to personalize every altercation you see that we have with white supremacist society. Because when you're black and you personalize some shit, well, what are you looking at? What are you then looking at? You're looking at black people, not white, because you're personalizing that shit. Unless you got personally white people all through your family and all through your life experience that you're using as a lens by which you filter your view of white people through and how white people treat black people, right? When you personalize as a black person, you're perpetually pointing your finger at black people if you do that. It's my point. And you're not going to be getting to the root of our activities and engagement here in a white supremacist society. When you have a racially polarized issue, you're still not getting to the root if you just personalize it about some shit you got going on with black people in your life, right? Like this, Rules play different when they up to bat white supremacist society, right? So being on code removes you from the personalizing. It removes you from the personalizing of a situation and it puts you smack dab on the playing field that white supremacist terrorist society deals with you and everybody black on. It deals with your people on race, right? So in addressing uh, the brother Corey being off code or not knowing the code, whatever it is you call it, and the niggas that want to be like him and talk like him, whatever the fuck, hey, nigga, never, never, ever, never, never, ever will the dominant society of white people say, hey, that little 11-year-old white girl who got knocked out by that black man who was trying to insert himself into her and her friends day at the mall by pretending like they were fighting, because that's what I saw, so he could go over there with his mental enfeeblement, leave his family and shit, Nobody's going to say, she probably come from poverty and she ain't shit bitch and her mama a funky bitch and she's struggling and she stay in a low income trailer park and she smoke meth and she fight men all day. Like, they're not going to do that, right? So, you coon ass niggas. So, I'm just trying to help y'all to be in on code because code hasn't been taught for generations, man. We Worldwide, we haven't had a worldwide device to counter white supremacist narrative head on every day like we do now in the information age and the age of internet, et cetera. So let's do that. Let's run this solidarity tip up their ass is what we on right now, right now, right? Put all that side sniping of black women to the side. I could even go further and say, white people, they're not going to use three little white girls being assaulted by a grown 51-year-old retired linebacker looking at his black man not minding his own motherfucking business, they're not going to use that situation as a bridge to shit on the parenting of the white girls there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you see how the cool niggas is made? <laughs> white folks, they're going to be like, that black nigger, he should be killed. Kill that black nigger. And y'all know it. You know what I'm saying? So why do cool black men think it's not like that? Uh, these soft ass cool niggas, they want to think white people would do the same questioning of white parenting in a situation like that, that they've done with this black girl. If a white girl ever chose to retaliate against a black male aggressor who's assailing her little group at a mall unprovoked, and he's deciding his grown ass brain that he don't want to leave the little girls alone. Coons want to think white society thinks like a coon. And a coon will go in on his own, on his own people. But nope, nigga, oops, coon ass niggas, hoe ass niggas, they're gonna call for your black ass death and talk about her parents later. <laughs> Away from you and I and anybody's black ass ears and eyeballs. You see what I'm saying? And what? I mean, that's the motherfucking reality. You know what I think is? I think some brothers just look for a reason to trash black femininity in any way they can publicly. Let's let's get into that shit. Because maybe that's how they've been eating and getting paid is by trashing black women. I mean, the money is low in respecting and defending black women. Okay. I guess any black man sitting up watching this piece of shit, David Bell, run up on uh bunch of black children his tub of lord ass and they sitting up talking that black mamas ain't shit type of shit 
Yeah, motherfucker, you you wanted to shit on a black woman out of this. You wanted to shit on it. You you probably old black media minded. You probably old black entertainment minded. And we're really just waiting on your stale ass type of shit to die off out here. So we cannot have our various platforms diluted with y'all's type of coon BS. Well, we're trying to run this black solidarity thing. We're tired of seeing our shit get muddled up with your lackluster, uninformed, unentertaining bullshit. But that's another discussion. Or maybe it's the same discussion. I mean, whatever it is, motherfuckers is eating on shitting on the image of black women. 50 ways past Sunday. Let's get that out there. Uh, one of my Twitter followers said this about this post. She was like, um, you know, about the video that got put up. She was like, let me see if I can get, find the direct tweet. Um, yeah, I don't see the direct tweet. It's it's somewhere deep. I don't want to pull it up, but she said something like, you know, black women already don't get a fair shake in the media to be seen as a feminine woman. You know what I mean, we're only seeing black women being put out as aggressors, even down to the little girls. You know what I'm saying? So notice that shit. The same toxic masculinity shit that black men get falsely painted with, toxic femininity gets suited on the black woman in this society. If you're not paying attention, you know what I mean? It, some shit we all see. Becky Hustangin' ass, she get the eternal angelic flower bullshit, right? Can't do no wrong, don't do no wrong, won't do no wrong bullshit, right? You know, you got to peel through layer after layer of love and hip-hop and other bullshit just to get the humanized, gentle, but powerful soul that is the black woman. You know what I mean? Just to get that presented to you, at least in white supremacist media, you do. They make sure to keep that black woman's image off of immediate display and be sure to only show the ones that make black women look dumb. Or, uh, they make sure to show only the women that make black women look weak or stupid or monstrous in some kind of way. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate that shit. I don't appreciate none of it. And I don't appreciate motherfuckers that's profiting off pushing a program like that in their life, right? A lot of these coons, they fall victim to that anti-black woman programming. Okay, my mic cut off. Like I said, man, a lot of these coons, they, they get caught up in that anti-black woman programming put out by white supremacist society, especially if, if any part of the programming gets reinforced with the black women they choose to fuck with. Like, if they fucking with chicks that do fucked up shit and then the programming that they get from society kind of mirrors that, you know what I mean? This is where that anti-black woman psychology starts to show its root cause from choices that they make in life. And as a result, they're not wired, really, to see any good in black women. From those type of dudes and Anybody who entertains those dudes are probably lost causes, basically. I don't think them niggas is going to get back on the damn roller coaster that we on. They're willing to project the dissatisfaction that white supremacist programming and whatever they got from their little life choices in women and take it all the way off cold, right? Like, oh, they feel better. They're going to go all the way off cold if a black woman piss them off. Like, it's like, all right, it don't take much for you to get off cold. Like I said, you motherfuckers was ready and warm to start cooning type shit. That's how it looked like to me. <laughs> the the Sambo cats, they'll take a case like this publicly to go in on the three little black girls who were clearly goaded and prodded and then assaulted by a white male. Then they'll come right back around and flip it and twist it and use it as a springboard to go off on black women by proxy. That's some evil ass shit. I mean, these little girls were doing what they were taught to do in response to being disrespected, meddled with, affronted, whatever happened before that punch, right? Like in my June beauty supply commentary where the lady got punched in the mouth. She was outside arguing with the manager and shit. We don't know what happened before the camera started. And I gave her that wide berth. We did see her hit first. And, you know, that was dirty from the video's perspective. But again, we don't know nothing. We don't know the relationship. So I gave that whole situation a wide berth. 
But the white man in this case, he hit first. He came in meddling and he pushed two girls. This is an open and shut case. But Coons ain't gonna talk about that, right? And, and you know, that's what they're going through. They're not going, they're not gonna play right. Definitely not they're gonna talk about the programming process by which they learn to be like negatively biased towards black women. They're not gonna bring that up neither. We got other cool motherfuckers talking about well, why was she hitting the grown man? Like I said, y'all talking y'all talking about her like she's y'all baby mama or some shit. Adultifying the little girl. A hit from a child doesn't even register. That's like okay, she's 11, the dude is 51. That's like a one-year-old running up on a 40, 40 year old. A 39 year old and hitting the 39 year old or 41 year old an old motherfucker <laughs> what what do you do if a one year old run up and hit you 40 year old black man what do you do do you sock the one year old do you slam him on the ground do you ddt him and say hey what you doing hitting a grown man no y'all niggas are sick you understand y'all niggas are sick talking that shit david bell he approached her like he was in a boxing ring against another 230 pound man. And we still don't know what that man did. You know what I mean? Like we still don't know what he started the shit with. He had to start the shit. Black women and girls, they don't move unprovoked. 99% of them don't move unprovoked like that. It's usually something that got them going. So all y'all niggas that's siding with that motherfucker, y'all, Y'all asking for bad karma like a motherfucker. <laughs> that's what that is. And, you know, to me, that just it just sounds like pent up animus towards black women who raise little girls that will get in a man's face for being on some bullshit. And you niggas mad about it because you see your baby mama in her or whoever the fuck. But the cool ain't going to talk about them being sick in the head and seeing their baby mama that they beat up on in a 11 year old black girl who got assaulted. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I told y'all as a child, man, you know, I would run up on grown men with the weaponry of my time. No details given. I gave a few details, but not many. And what nobody talking about, oh, his mama, this and that, the old mama, his daddy, this and that. They like my mama for making me like this. You understand? <laughs> they like my mama in the hood. During this time, the 80s and 90s, my kind of warrior was necessary. This type of child was needed back in that time. You know what I mean? You want to talk about home training? Yeah, my old man, he was co-signing shit like this. You know what I'm saying? He was in and out the house or whatever. He was co-signing shit like this. Like when a grown adult fuck with you from a child space, yes, a grown adult, you can get it from a child on my Centoya Brown shit. And shout out to Centoria Brown. I'm glad she got clemency. You know what I mean? I'm glad when you touch down, if you come to Texas, you want a nigga to come through, hit that up one time. I'm going to hit it real hard for you. You know what I'm saying? When you come home, Centoria, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what I'm saying, if you want to go down the line, damn, you want to talk about my pops, you want to talk about my granddaddy, my granddaddies, you know what I mean? Shit, Rolling Stones, ladies, men on both sides. You know what I mean? They in the street, you know what I'm saying? So you know how that shit look. Some would say both of them was killers. If you want to go down to my uncles, you know what I'm saying? They gangsters. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? We can go down the list. So, yes, I'm on the side of the little girl who has to bring it to grown adults. Okay? Maybe a lot of these cool niggas shitting out here, they didn't come up as hard. They didn't come up with that kind of heart. But I did. So I understand her mentality. You know what I'm saying? I'm with her type of child mentality. And I'm guarding the gate to what this on cold life looked like in the presence of some shit like this, right? With this coon ass pile on when a black girl is assaulted. And yeah, we running up on adults and we on cold out here, bitch. Get it right. Get y'all shit right. So, you know, the coons ain't gonna talk about the kids who gotta run up on adults as a necessity. Yeah. 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 So, you know, this is to my young black kids out there or parents of young black kids out there. A lot of cool niggas going to speak up on shit. 
lot of the cool niggas picking up on shit. The older, I saw a lot of the older crowd, the I be more, the MGTOW ass niggas, the, well, y'all said she wanted to be independent. Is there your women want to be independent? I saw that kind of crowd speaking up. I told y'all those were the older cats, you know what I mean? I wasn't getting no pussy back in the day. They still mad at all women because the women don't fuck with they type of dude, right? And to them niggas, you know, we can just, you know, I ain't finna age shame, but their generation didn't see children running up on adults as a necessity, right? Let's just say that. The dude was like 50 right now, 40, late 40s now, right? But this 11-year-old girl and these 13-year-old girls, their generation in 2019, they did. You understand? And my generation did. So there. I mean, there's the fucking disconnect. It don't got to be a discourse ending disconnect. Just know where we come from. Just follow the code. Follow the solidarity of the shit. Despite our different upbringing, whatever, is my point. Don't throw black people under the bus, period, ever. I say it all the time. Black folk, we got moral credit that we can swing around this bitch in white supremacist media and attacking white supremacist abuse. When we got to get that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? If you cool, motherfuckers will just shut the fuck up and think to access it, access the credit we got before you step up in favor of black abusers. You know what I mean, like, that shit is low as hell of you niggas. Y'all, y'all don't know what that grown white male did because the case is still going on. We haven't heard from a little girl yet. We haven't heard from the lawyers. You understand? He could have groped on them, anything. We don't know. Just like I said in the Jasmine Barnes case, so many black people was quick to vilify Eric Black and Larry Woodruff with them not having one lawyer speak up. And that's what we're hearing this week. Oh, yeah, his lawyers are saying, man, motherfucker don't know shit about that shit. Yeah, yeah. listen to these lawyers talk. No quoted confessions from either. Just hearing a bunch of police talk and police so proactively trying to pre-persuade a jury pool with their bias and the police union jumping out in front to vilify these guys. And I say, you know, why is the police union jumping out in front to vilify people on a murder case that doesn't involve the police? I'm going to let y'all think on this shit. Why would they do that in? But I'm digressing. Let me just say, I do want to touch on uh, what the brother Corey Holcomb had to say a little bit. Not disparaging the man, because that's off cold, too. Fuck it. But, you know, something you hear him say often is that he don't fuck with upstanding black women. <laughs> now, we all know Corey is an actor. You know what I mean? He's a comedian. He's a jokey joke for entertainment type brother. So I want to address motherfuckers who choose fucked up women in their daily life and go into social media projecting destructive off cold shit because of it. And if this is not applying to Corey's actual viewpoint, is he just, just playing with us all this shit? I mean, if it ain't applying to his actual viewpoint when he's saying this, and when I'm saying this, just know that it's applying to somebody. Right? Like somebody live like what this funny man type of nigga that we laugh at I mean, it's putting out, right? <laughs> Somewhere. Because <laughs> he got an audience for it, you know what I'm saying? But him and his fans, you know what I mean? Will they come out and frame up some shit like that and admit some shit like that that they fuck with low self-image, low self-worth having, low self-determinism, low self-esteem having, low value having type women that can only produce fuckery and heartache in the life of a man. You know what I mean? Yet, those type of cats expect to congregate in a way around an issue like this, where it's blatant that they're venting from being wounded by all these fucked up experiences, right? They'll let their Real self-inflicted wounds from their choice association with fuck up ass women <laughs> automatically stain their appraisal of an assault that happened to a black girl by a white supremacist male. All with no backstory on the shit, all without doing the knowledge, all with no lawyers, just off watching part of a video, right? And to me, that just looked like you letting your personal pain compromise 
your investigation skills and letting pain feed your daily thoughts instead of separating the anger that you get planted in you by the women you fuck with and all the hurt and all that shit or whatever. <laughs> and I ain't saying just Corey, just I ain't saying just Corey and who he fuck with, you know what I mean? But the dudes out here who cheering on this black ain't shit gallery behind the shit and the black ain't shit commentary on this assault on three minors that happened. You high-fiving that shit based on the grown adult women you fuck with and fucked up your life fucking with and not separating all that emotion and whatever else you harboring from that from the facts on the main scene of a situation like this and situations that are like this, right? And that's some dirtball ass shit. I'm going to say that. So, yo, fuck any niggas that got something to say about her upbringing, her parenting, her mama. If you made a beeline for her mama out of her being assaulted, that's some sissy masculinity. That's some bitch. And that's some hoe inside of your body. Inside your body, nah? <laughs> But coon ass motherfuckers, they ain't gonna talk about how their preference for bad choices in women have them shitting on little girls and women when shit go wrong in the streets like this, right? Coon motherfuckers not gonna mention their fucked up shit, right? And I said this in my video on uh, XXX Tentacion, RIP to that man XXX, man. And shoot, Jasmine Barnes while I'm bringing up RIPs and shit down. RIP to Jasmine Barnes and shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, on that video, man, I was explaining like, yo, we have our esteem for one another assaulted black people. We have our goodwill for one another assaulted so much from both internal and external sources that we over time have developed an instinct to self blame and blame black people, fault blackness. Every time something bad happened to us, because we're having a bit of a time coming together and shitting on white supremacy all the same time and shitting on our oppressor all the same time, right? The easiest thing to do is to blame somebody who's oppressed while you being oppressed, who's sitting right next to you and not face the oppressor. That's the easiest shit to do, but that's some coward ass shit. You know what I'm saying? So if you're one of these old black media minded niggas, old black entertainment minded niggas who speaking all the way the fuck wrong on this issue with our little girls and her friends that was out there that day. Get your motherfucking shit right or just retire and get the fuck out the way. Get your motherfucking ass on somewhere. Pro-black empowerment is on the rise and we committed to living by a black first code, race first code, first them code. That's what we're doing. So if you're not up to speed or the same mind, nigga, at this point, it's the hell with your life. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all don't get mad, but that's what the fuck the shit stay. That's where it's going, G. Eventually, our thoughts in the pro-black empowerment space, eventually, our thoughts will become a system just like your self-blaming, blame black, black mama blaming thoughts became a system in the black community, too. Don't forget that. We coming up. And as we get your dumb ass out the way, and, and as we still stay stomping the shit out of white supremacy at the same time, I mean, just know that that's the shit that's going on. And if you ain't of a singular mind about our enemies and about our detriments out here, you motherfuckers is fucking up. Straight up. But anyway, you know, the code of the day is race first. Everybody does it. Shit, check out my Teespring. Let's get some orders today. Things should arrive before Valentine's Day is the estimation I'm getting. So check me out. I mean, got more to come. Thank you for all y'all who plan on ordering. I appreciate it. Don't forget to go to waytoslay.com for all your hair and nail needs. If you're in the way of managing it by yourself, you know what I mean? Manage your own hair and nails by yourself. You don't want to sit up and wait for the agents to fuck your shit up or try to fight you while you're there. You don't want to wait for a barber to fuck your shit up when you just need a shape up or some shit. You just need a trim to get the beard right. So I'm growing my beard right now. You know what I'm saying? 
but I ain't finna let it be no beard. I'm finna trim it and shit. And you know, when it comes to a certain length, you, and you better believe I'm gonna support me at waytooslay.com. You know what I mean? Finna get one of them Kame baby trimmers. Shit finna be fly, you know what I'm saying? But don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you know when I'm dropping. Get it, y'all.